bring you the registration of my act. This is a special day today. We are here in the Weta Workshop Armory. I am surrounded by not just swords, but some of the most amazing hero swords, the swords that were made during the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbits. Obviously, we've got Andoril here. We've got Glamdring. We've got Boromir's gorgeous hand and a half. There is a whole range of weapons, and we're not just here to have a look. We're gonna meet Swordsmith Christopher here Welcome. in the workshop. What are we doing today, dude? What can I do? Can I can I be of assistance? Well, today is cleaning day. Cleaning um, day. So I'm gonna hand you a couple of swords. Okie dokie. Who's your favorite? Faramir or Boromir? Oh. So it shall be once more! I got uh yeah, it's got to be Boromir. You wish now that I had died and Boromir had lived. This sword is just an absolute beast. So we've got a bit of aging on here for the last 20 years. They are right. getting on, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to apply a micro crystalline wax to the surface of this, and we will get rid of some of this rust that's starting to pit on here. So this yeah. is like the big hero sword yep. that Peter obviously would have made. Yep. So Peter made this. Uh, 20 some odd years ago. This is the one that's on the movie posters everywhere else. Wow. Uh, everything else is a copy of this. May I hold? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so much steel. And the thing I really love about this blade is the balance point. This is like an insanely thick blade, but because of the pommel, it's just gorgeous. It just and all the so hollow grinds, of course, reduce a lot of weight. So it's actually quite thin through the middle. Yeah, right. I mean, that nice. Whoa, that is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so, just like spring steel, yeah, presumably, so for the blade. Spring steel. Um, so give a feel of that one. And then Faramir <sighs> sword I'm, I'm, as well. I'm not doing any further than that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not game. So Faramir sword. There's a bit less metal here, yep. but there's also considerably less pommel. Yeah, the pommel, I mean, the pommel, so look at this. overall weight is very different. Yeah, wow. A, a sword like this is a little arming sword would yep. really be used with a shield. Yep. Um, or a buckler of some sort. So your hand protection comes from your other hand. But with filming, this charge, you know. They love it, always don't they? Yeah. Every director so. says, yep, and run in, please. I think there's like one more up on the wall we have to look at, right? Oh, can, you want to see? Can, you want to see Glamdring? Yeah, can we have a look at it? <laughs> look at this beast! It's really interesting just how much pitting is on the blade. I mean, obviously, Rings was shot on 35 mil, so it's kind of that, that yeah, over so detailing. That or? one's a bit more detailed, but of course, this would have been found in a hoard. Yeah, right. So the aging on Glamdring and Sting would be very different than something made by men. Yeah, I get constantly in use, whereas this is dug it's out. It's an elvish blade that's ages old now. This, oh, this is a leather wrap on the on yeah. the grip so here? it's leather shrunk around the wire wrap that's applied to the wood grip. I do believe all of the rub throughs are from filming, not yeah. from actual yeah, direction. Yeah. These have been used. <laughs> these are the swords. Well, I guess we better jump in the workshop and yeah. uh, get, get to these, work. Uh, let's get these clean. Let's get these clean. Oh, he's caught me, he's caught me. I, I, I've got Anderil off the wall here. But this, so this is aluminium blade. Yeah, so what it I like to show so people something light. about this is oh. you can really see the color difference on camera. Oh, wow. And Look so anytime they throw these on, on screen, I'm like, well, it's a sword-shaped object, not necessarily a sword. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, it's just a urethane hilt, right? But this means an actor can use it all day. This is a massive sword. Swords like this for filming Lord of the Rings were the ones that were used for combat, right. Whereas these hero blades never actually made contact with another sword. They're essentially what photography options or extreme yeah. close-ups on the hero close prop. Extreme close-ups. Anytime you need, you know, that that movie poster look. These ones we can produce a lot faster. Okay. So basically, what we do is make one of these aluminium blades. It's considerably thicker than yeah, right. any of the steel blades. I guess it has to be for strength, right? It has yeah. to be for strength, but it gives us the other option too. It gives us enough room inside of here to make a mold. Okay. So we actually mold the aluminium blades with the hero components on them. Yeah. And then we can either run a urethane complete blade or throw an aluminium blade in there and cast the hilt around it so that this is all urethane. And then this hardware then goes married on to 
the steel blade. This allows us to actually run an armature up the inside. Right. Because it's thick enough, yep. we can either use spring steel or uh, carbon fiber in there. So you, you have like a spring steel rod with a little loop at the end or it comes all the way back down. Um, this is the same way we do bows and stuff. Yeah, wow. Because of course I mean, they've the bow, got so much flex. It has they? to actually work. Yep. Bows are hard. Getting the limbs to bend the same way and loose an arrow that isn't dangerous. Yeah. That's one of the big that's challenges. The, the, the blend, right? Yeah, you want it yep. to look good and not kill people. It's kind of the balance of all film. And as you can imagine, a sword is a very efficiently designed object yes, to it's hurt people. It's almost like that's what it's been intended to do for <laughs> thousands of years. Uh, wow, all right, an, an, oh. enough chat. Let's go get, let's get something sparkly clean. Sure. So, these swords generally get grabbed by the blade. Of course. Which is not great. Some people um, are have a worse pH balance than others, so they will rust the blade. I found just, some just people with their just, skin. Yeah, so the oils on your skin are what are actually causing most of this rust. Wow. That's why we have to paint steel, because it just wants to be a rock. Yep. Its goal in life is to turn into iron oxide in our <laughs> atmosphere. So, we are going to prevent that from happening. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the hilt. That way you can actually hold it by the blade. Right. You're not gonna get any of this uh, auto saw, this microcrystalline wax on the leather itself. We're just gonna going avoid for the, that. For the pommel and then the guard? Just the pommel and the guard. And of course, this one has a lot of weird little swoopy bits oh, in there. It does. Take our little toothpaste cap off and we're just gonna put a little dollop on the rag itself and then move that on and kind of move it around like you're putting on sunscreen or whatever. From here, there's actually an abrasive powder in here. So this is... Yeah, I can hear that sort of Yeah, that you grit. can kind of feel that yeah. texture. So what we'll do is kind of roll that around. You can see how black the rag oh, gets. Wow, have a look at this part. Well, that's actually the blackening happening from the, the wax itself. That's the compound we're using to polish this. Now, yeah. now, we keep using essentially the same part of the rag. All that rusty stuff, that's what we're trying to remove. The so brown, yeah. What's nice is this wax um, adds a layer to Oh, cool, it. so it gives it a little bit of a coating to help yeah. give a protective element Just as well. Just to hide it from the oxygen a little bit. I'll hand this one off to you. Right. You can see how the uh, <laughs> you can see how the brass is shined up oh, real well. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize that had a little brass trim. So. Yeah. All right. So I'll hand you that. And we're gonna, we're gonna focus around. We'll, we'll start getting into this bottom section, keeping it away from the leather. Yep, nice and firm. Yeah, wow, you can feel that grit. I'm so scared of getting it on the leather. <laughs> I will not be responsible for damaging the Boromir Master Blade. You better not be. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I can see the, 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 the brown coming out of the grooves. Look at the difference in the level of here. We've got like a relatively cleaned up section versus all of this stuff in here. It does build up. So yeah, up here we've got quite a lot of stuff that we're trying to get rid of. This one's quite textured, but this blade itself was also built at a Faramir standard, not a Boromir standard. Yeah, right. As, as the, <laughs> the story requires. So even, even these tiny details, it's like, well, it's just Faramir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we clean it with that standard as well? Should we put extra attention in, in the Firstborn Sun sword? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll let Faramir's sword get a bit filthy, you know? The way Peter did this sword in particular um, is by carving in the details wow. with a Dremel, filling them up with the uh, uh, brass solder. Wow. So, uh, brazing, really. That is so um, cool. So that's why there's some, and is, some is, of the pitting and stuff. Is, yeah, you can sort of... That's like air bubbles in the actual process of making it. Wow. Um, where the uh, zinc in the bronze is actually boiled off a little bit and yeah, it's cool. left a little void. Whereas this one's actually a brass rod wrapped around and then very carefully welded in one spot and cleaned wow. up. That's clever. The metal actually shrinks as it cools, so it, uh, tightens, yeah, yeah, it, it up. tightens it tightens it in and keeps so it nice and tight. That's why these are nice and tight. Oh, we do need to give these a little touch, keep it off the leather. They'll have me working in the Minas Tirith armories in no time. <laughs> so I got into swordsmithing because swords are interesting. The first thing I ever cast was aluminium. Yeah. Because um, I used to do a lot of engineering um, and welding and stuff, uh, all from high school and beyond. Yeah. And so I was like, well, sand casting seems like something I should know how to do. So I went and got like, Novelty moon sand or something at one of those. The yeah, yeah, yeah. It sort of like holds its shape a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made a little like sculpy thing and then pressed that into the sand. Uh, heated up some aluminium with an oxyacetylene torch, and then just poured it into the sand. And it worked remarkably well. <laughs> I, it's one of those things where you think back on it, you know, so many years later, and you're like, 
that shouldn't have worked. I didn't know anything slash, at the time. Slash could have burned down mum and dad's house. Well, I was, yeah. just, I was in school, so it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, my school had a nice trade program, so I was doing a lot of um, vocational stuff. Yeah, right. Because um, I have to make stuff. Like, that's yeah, just, that, that's just how it I'm works. getting that with all the staff here. Everyone's yep. compelled to create. It's phenomenal. And that's the thing. It's like, I do swords now more uh, regularly when those kinds of jobs come in, but another big part of my job is actually doing miniatures here. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, oh, that's, that's a you shame. Know, that's whatever not really, that means. That's not really relevant to us, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what sort of minis have you worked on in your, in your time here at Winner? Um, so we've done a whole lot of the stuff for Thunderbirds on set, which is a cool TV show where they've got like all of the, the miniature backgrounds and the yep. CG characters inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I guess probably the, the most exciting one would have been Blade Runner. Yes, yes, okay, talk to me about 2049. <laughs> it's like um, probably one of my favorite films in the last decade. It was definitely really a very special project. Like we're working on it and it's definitely one of those things where, wait, are we the young guys that are gonna come in and ruin someone's <laughs> amazing IP? Yeah, um, that's, that's a terrifying pressure. It, it, it was yeah. insane pressure, because yeah. we bit on the job and it was like, sweet, that would be cool if we got it. And we got it and we're like, oh, what have we just done? We have to do this right. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And what was really cool is working with a lot of the industry professionals that filmed the Lord of the Rings miniatures back in the day. Yeah. Alex Funky. One of the coolest guys I've ever worked with in yeah. my entire career. And any chance I get to, I try to work with him again. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a champion. Uh, we even filmed on a lot of the same equipment. Like the the snorkel cam and stuff? Yeah, so we had a motion control cam that burnt down in a fire cool. several years ago. <laughs> so it had to get rebuilt for this, so yeah. it was then named the Phoenix. The Phoenix. I love it. That's incredible. Um, but yeah, great big giant motion control unit um, we filmed out at Avalon Studios. But what was interesting is we also uh, photogrammed all of our assets, wow. our miniatures. So there's completely digital shots with our miniatures thrown in there. Amazing. So it was a good blend. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's it. I mean, we every, every department we talk to, in the modern age, it's all about this blend between the digital tech and the practical element. That's how you survive, right? So you have cool. To. It's really quite special because it gives the storytellers more to work with. Yeah. It, it gives them an opportunity to tell a story with a lot more freedom, yeah. but with the practical effects side of things. You get that reality. It. You get that gritty realism. Yeah. That is awesome. So for the blade itself. Yes. Now you're ready for that. The big job. So you're gonna do the exact same thing. You wanna spread that out over the length of the blade a bit. And you want to do it on both sides if you can. Ah, of um, course, because you can work back and forth with both fingers. Yeah, yeah I'll go along with but you. But because these are hollow ground, you've really got to make your thumb or finger kind of match the, the shape that you've got. And you're just going to pinch. These aren't sharp swords, so this is less dodgy. Um, <laughs> when it's a sharp sword, it's uh, definitely oh, pay attention. I can really feel the grit on the, like, look, I'm going up and down. That one really up. needs a birthday, so it's a good thing you showed up today. Oh, man. <laughs> you can see it coming right off, too. It's. The fuller is like that much cleaner now, and you can see where I'm stopping as well. So I came here working um, for Weta directly. So I used to do a lot of conventions and stuff back in the States and Canada, and met up with the Weta people, started doing shows there for the different Comic-Cons and things, and then was kind of flown around a bit. I did a show in Korea and then Mexico City. Um, and eventually I reminded everyone that I actually hadn't been to New Zealand yet, so. Uh... <laughs> Just a Came down here. Get me down there, folks. Come on. Yep. Now we're permanent residents on our way to citizenship. Amazing. I'm working here. I'll be joining you soon. Look at this gorgeous piece of steel, man. 20 years on and it's still absolutely awesome. I gotta say, being a Lord of the Rings nerd, coming into this as a swordsmith, these are the swords, right? Yeah, I this know. Is, there are is, no other swords. This is <laughs> what people are introduced to when, yeah. they, when they think of swords. And one of my jobs is to make sure that these artifacts are in good condition, following in Peter's footsteps. Yeah. Or hammer strikes, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hammer blows. Yeah. It's really cool to be able to share this with some people sometimes. I'm getting that a lot. There's, there's, there's no desire for separation between the craft and the fans. Like you guys are. Everyone here we talk to is just so willing and like, oh yes. Please, I'd love to, 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 to take ownership of my work and, and share everything about it. And that's that's so what's I, really cool about modern swordsmiths is there are no secrets now. Yeah. If you want to know something, yeah. somebody's put it out there. Um, Peter reminds me 
that wasn't the case when he started in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, he had <laughs> to know? do everything himself. He had to figure yeah. it out in New Zealand where there isn't museums to go look at things. Yeah. Uh, His knowledge base comes from a, a practical side that he's imbued with the way he does things, which is utterly unique to other swordsmiths. And I am in the unique position to be able to learn from everyone. Yeah, wow, <laughs> what a privilege. Or is it pressure? Yeah, <laughs> one of the two. Yeah. Speaking of privileges, it's been amazing to come in today. Man. Thanks for helping out. Absolutely incredible. I'll hand you back here. Your beautiful blade. Yep. No big deal, <laughs> just hanging out in weather, cleaning the hero swords from the Lord of the Rings. Amazing. Before we darted off to discover the next magical wonderland inside Weta Workshop, Chris and Jules couldn't resist showing oh. us one more piece. Holy <laughs> shit, oh my goodness. This is massive. So is this like a, a prototype of Sauron's mace? Yeah, so Peter would have made that and then they wanted to increase the size of the head for it and stuff. But that's how big Sauron's hand actually is. Wow, <laughs> that is huge. And so is this all steel? It's all it's aluminium. Just, oh. This is aluminium. Yeah. Oh my so lord. So that's actually hollow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, above my desk, there's actually another hollow one oh up there. Oh my god, there's so edge. much weight. Look so at if the that etching. was solid, you would not pick it up. No, you would not. Look at that gorgeous etching. So and the all idea acid behind, etched, or? yeah. So that's all the details are acid etched, but the color is the idea that Sauron's emitting so much heat right. that he's actually bluing the. Steel. It's like it's like oh wow, that is so cool. So like his his sword that never made screen time was done the same way as well. Um, Let's take that sentence a step back. His sword that never made screen time? Have you not heard this story? I have not heard this story. We just released another collectible, oh, wow. um, what, maybe last year. Oh, is that the tall boy? Yeah, the like yeah, one yeah. six? So yeah. you, can, you can swap out his mace for his sword, oh, that... giant sword, because I think they wanted to like write a scene where Aragorn was fighting so, Sauron. Oh yeah, of course, so the troll scene where they got comped over. Yeah. I do remember so that. that was like, yeah. That is cool. I'm gonna oh. give you this beast back. <laughs> Mental. Mental.